Introducing Royal Caribbean's newest ship, Icon of the Seas, the ultimate family vacation. The ultimate six slides, eight neighborhoods, zero compromise vacation. The ultimate never done that, can't wait to do it vacation. The ultimate chillin' by a different pool every day of the week vacation. This is the Icon of Vacations. Icon of the Seas, arriving in 2024. Book today. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. Okay, Topo Maps Plus is one of the world's leading backcountry navigation apps, turning your phone into a fully functional GPS unit. Backroads Maps Books is proud to offer maps as an in-app purchase for Topo Maps. This makes it super easy to download mobile apps for offline use. This way you can get accurate and reliable GPS tracking and navigation while out of cell and data service. With Topo Maps Plus, you can view your location on the map, add waypoints, trace new routes, measure distance and elevation, Change and share your tracks with your friends, you know, once you're back in service. Never get lost with Backroads Maps. Well, this sucks. everybody welcome to another episode of the focus hunting podcast the focus hunting podcast is part of the waypoint outdoor collective for more information on waypoint make sure you head on over to waypointtv.com okay guys uh for this episode i got uh, my good buddy doug bose on i think you guys are familiar with him he's been on the show before he's the author of two great books uh no bait just bears and the ultimate guide to black bear hunting uh, if you guys haven't read those really suggest going picking those up i think they're available on amazon um yeah you could probably just google them um, we're actually going to do a draw giveaway for this episode. Uh, we're going to give away one of Doug's books and uh, some focus swag, so stay tuned. That'll be up on my Instagram page. I'll tag Doug in it too so he can get in on it. Um, yeah, uh, no spring bear hunt in Washington. I think uh, you know this hits close to home for, for the folks here in BC. Uh, we lost the grizzly bear hunt uh, a few years back now. So yeah, Doug just brings us up to speed with what's going on and, and you know, uh, what the next play is to uh, to try to get that back. You know, it's tough once something's taken away. It's it's really hard to uh, to get it back. Anyway, we're just gonna get rolling with this episode. Um, hope you guys enjoy it. Nice. Yeah, I'm up at uh, the folks house this weekend. So. Well, nice. Yeah. Where's so, that? That's out in uh, Rock Creek area. So it's about a hour and a half drive from uh, Kelowna. So. Huh. Out in the country. On the sticks. Yeah, man. Take the kids out here for the weekend. I get to chase some whitetails. Nice. Yeah. I like How chasing those whitetails, man. That's fun. Yeah. You had a good trip, eh? Yeah, no, it was it was great. Um, you know, a friend of mine, it, so it's about a if if Highway 20 is closed, it's about a five hour drive from my house um to the area I I could hunt the whitetail. And a buddy of mine kind of lives out there, so I was just able to shack up with him. Um while I was hunting, which was nice because he had a he kind of a separate entry to his house. And so I didn't really bother him and his family. I just kind of come and go. And um it was great. It was a great trip. Saw lots of deer, uh, some bucks, but uh ended up, you know, last day type of thing. Last last morning I was gonna be hunting. I, I spotted that five by four and ended up getting it. So that was great. <laughs> those are the best uh those are the best hunts, I swear. I know. Well, I, and I could shoot any white tail, but I, and I was almost shooting a doe. I don't know how many times I'm like, man, I should just shoot a doe and get out of here. This is just taking too long. And I was like, nah, I got to hold out. I've never shot a white tail buck. So I just wait. Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. Well, that's good. Good for yeah. you. Thank you. You get, uh, you get doing, you get to do a lot of white tail hunting. Uh, I get to do some. So in the Eastern part of the state where I hunt mule deer, um there are some whitetails down in the river bottoms and stuff that you are allowed to hunt uh for that one deer tag that you have um and those are like depending on those are like spike or better um white tail otherwise mule deer are like three point or better yeah. um so now and again you know we'll we'll get to hunt them but uh never in the never in the late season like i had that was a special draw tag that was a special hunt so that was kind of cool because they were I actually heard him grunting, come up a hill, chasing a doe, and it was kind of a rut type of situation. It was cool. It was fun to watch. Nice, nice. So is uh, 
is mule deer uh open for you guys down there or is that draw allocation too no a mule deer is over the counter in october um for a modern firearm so with deer season over here you have to pick a weapon you have to either pick a modern firearm rifle um a bow or muzzle loader and those each have separate seasons right. and currently i think there are some units that are open for like archery or something for for uh mule deer right now but because i'm modern firearm i didn't I didn't pay any attention to the late season for them. So, but that's very, very little units that are available now, I think for that, because it's later in the season. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So what are you going to do with your white tail? Do you, you doing uh, like a Euro mount for that? that? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing a Euro mount. going to put it in the living room. Um, and you know, the meat's already at the house and processed and I had fajitas with it. That was the first thing I cooked with it. So that was tasty. And yeah, I like white tail. White tail meat's probably my favorite deer meat. Yeah. I like white tail meat. I mean, I, uh, I love hunt mule deer like more than any other critter there is, but I, I prefer white tail deer meat over mule deer. Yeah, no, I would agree with that. Yeah. 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 Well, that's cool. Yeah. It's great. Nice. Do you guys get a lot of uh, CWD down there? Do you have to- um, so there, there is some cases I think going on and, uh, blue tongue was a big issue for the white tail, uh, this year in that, in that area, uh, because of the drought. And I guess, I guess like the noceums, the little flies, uh, kind of pass that along to those deer and then they, they congregate and, you know, wherever the water is and then the flies kind of hit them all there. And so they, they were having a problem with that. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know a whole lot about major issues with CWD over, over here. Yeah. We don't have a huge issue. I mean, they do sporadic testing, I think. Uh, I mean, obviously you can, you know, just turn your, your skull over and you can get it tested. But, uh, I, I know my brother, they do it more often than not over in Alberta, more than we do oh, it yeah. here anyway. Yeah. It's tough, man. Like it's tough to give up that nice five by four head. Oh yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you know, it's this. Yeah, it's tough. So you think you'd be able to get it back eventually? You know, just pressure wash it or something. Like get rid yeah. of it. You know, somehow or another. Yeah, you think. Put it in bleach. Yeah, you think be able to get it back. I don't know. I've never, I've never handed one over for testing. So I guess, but uh, maybe if there's a couple more known cases, I guess I'll have to start looking at doing that. But yeah, so what's uh what the heck's going on down there, man? Oh man, what a cluster. So are are, are we starting a thing now or are we just yeah, pushing? yeah, yeah, <laughs> let's roll it. Okay. So you know, it, it really just kind of blindsided, I think, a lot of bear hunters and hunters in general. So in, in Washington, there's kind of like three entities going on. There's the Department of Fish and Wildlife, which is like the main government entity. There's the uh, Fish and Wildlife Game Commission, which is like a panel of nine commissioners. You can almost think of it like the Supreme Court for big game hunting or hunting over here. And then there's the GMAC, which is uh, like a a game management advisory committee. And they don't have a whole lot of power. Uh, The commission, the nine people, they kind of create the rules and regs for the Department of Fish and Wildlife to enforce, if that makes sense. So they online, and this is, this is very uh, common, you know, every year they, they kind of go through the rules and regs and they might change some wording here or there. They might adjust permits, special permits, this or that. And in the description for the spring bear, uh, what, what was on the item list to possibly change, it was like, hey, there's, there's 10 special permits for this special draw that we have over on the coast, over on the Long Beach unit. We might drop it down to six tags. And there's some other wording that we might change around that might make it more uh, um, uh, easier to comprehend what the what the spring bear hunter has to do as far as bringing in his hide and his skull for inspection. Nothing like major. And you're thinking, okay, so, you know, they might drop down some tags. There's some special wording, nothing huge. And it even said in there, it's like, the Department of Fish and Wildlife expects that, you know, the spring bear uh, hunt will continue. 
um, nothing about ethics or the morality of the hunt, nothing like that. So it was just like, hey, we might change these few tags. We might change some wording. Other than that, not a huge deal. Please leave your comments online if you agree or disagree. And so a lot of hunters, you know, any bear hunter I know, they're all like, yeah, this is fine. Um, you know, we should, we should expand spring bear hunting um, for over the counter because we actually have tons of bears roaming around, which everyone knows who actually hunts bear. Um, and so the online period was for X amount of days. They extended it for, uh, I don't know what their reason was, but they extended it because of public interest, quote unquote. Um, and I think that might have had to do with a lot of a coordinated attack against bear hunting in general, where they were getting like just flooded with people from across the country, like uh, the Humane Society of the United States, some of their followers. We're just sending in, you know, comments online against bear hunting. Um, and then they had they had a meeting, um, a comment period, a public comment period, which to my knowledge, I don't even think they were supposed to take. They weren't supposed to allow that during their their meeting or something to that effect. But anyway, they took a public comment period online via Zoom. And that happened to be the Friday of the second weekend of modern deer season, which is like the Super Bowl basically for deer hunters, modern deer hunters, for a lot of hunters in Washington state. And so- Now, was this by design or like, is the, this is just fortuitously or like did this, they I, did this by design, like- I, I can't say it's by design, but it smells funky to me. Yeah. Because they it's you can do it on a Friday or a Saturday, that's when they do these meetings. And so that leaves 105 days in a year to choose. And they chose the happen to choose right in the middle of the year. Yeah. You know, like when everyone's traveling to or from, you know, going to camp because they get off work, they're heading out. They've already left their online comments and it was portrayed online as, hey, this isn't a big deal. There's just a few things that are, you know, that might change, but we expect the spring bear season to keep going. And so like myself, like I just left my comments. I was like, you know, hey, we should continue it maybe over the counter if if that can be sustained. And then I went hunt. I wasn't worried about necessarily giving my online input. And so the online input came in and there was, it got flooded by um, like 90%. It was anti-hunting uh, in general. Um, so I think the Humane Society and other animal rights groups, anti-hunting groups uh, just you know, bombed the place. And a lot of those people were, they weren't even from the state. They were, you know, across the nation. So they shouldn't really even have a say in it in the first place. Yeah. Okay. okay. So like, this is like a public forum. It, well, yeah. So you could, you could basically sign up um, or raise your hand during the meeting. And then they would call on you and you would get like three minutes to talk or something to that. And this is what they're basing it on. So like the cat lady in New Jersey, she could just write in and be like, stop, stop the bear hunting. Yeah, yeah. Or do it twice or three times. Because I was looking at some of the online comments and it was like the same person wrote it like three times. Oh, like, oh you should fuck. never hunt, blah, blah, blah. You're evil. It's immoral. But and the funny thing is, is that, like I say, the ethics and the morality of the hunt wasn't even up for question. And so and and so there's there's it's like a perfect storm. And so normally they're on this commission. There's four people for the west side of the state or excuse me, three people for the west three people for the east and then three floaters so that makes nine people and when i say floaters i mean three other random people who live in in random other parts of the state right so no one part of the state is overrepresented um but right now there's only eight there's not a ninth appointed so there's only so four people voted no and four people voted yes and the Department of Fish and Wildlife was actually endorsing this they were like hey you know all the science a hundred page document that i've read was pushed, pushed to the commission and said, hey, you know, everything, all of our biologists say that this is totally sustainable. The, the population can take it. It's actually needed, um, you know, to help with, with fawn and calving and, and tree damage and all this other stuff, uh, human, human interaction. Um, so they, the Department of Fish and Wildlife were actually pushing to, to get the hunt passed. And four voted no, four voted against. And evidently a tie, uh, something in the RCW and the legal doc said, if there's a tie, then the season just gets canceled. So psh, the season. Come on. Got no, yeah. no. Yeah. Just, despite the, not having a ninth 
commissioner, which by law should be appointed. And and uh, so it's 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 really just kind of mind blowing. Dude, I'm so, speechless here. Like, I, so <laughs> I think a lot okay. of people are. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, there's a lot to unpack with what you just yeah, told no, me there, here. There, um, there's a lot going on. So yeah, I mean, we can dissect this, but like, <laughs> oh, and, and so like the, the long and short just of it speechless. Too is, is like the, those those commissioners are appointed by our governor. And our governor is, you know, an environmentalist nut job, complete wacko. Your and governor so, is. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Like, oh, it's nauseating. And so he gets to appoint these people and then they get, uh, they get confirmed by the legislation, by the legislators. So he can appoint them. Legislator have to say yay or nay. Um, and so, you know, I, I emailed um, some of the no votes, I got one lady who emailed me back. Her name is Lorna Smith. She's a commissioner on there. She's an appointed commissioner. She has not been confirmed yet by the legislature, which I don't even think she should be able to vote yet because she hasn't been confirmed. But I guess if you're appointed, you can vote. Um, and I says, hey, you know, I'd like to hear your reasoning behind this. And uh, not to quote her directly, I guess, but it, it basically came down to I personally find uh, spring bear hunting unethical because bear are starving and lethargic and, you know, it's a, it's an opportune oh. time for. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. So, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. There, I mean, <laughs> so her response, what, does, is she a bear hunter? Uh, no. Then how the fuck would she know what bears are like in the spring? She has never hunted a bear. She has never killed a bear. And she said she never will do that. Um, so well, she's just she, against, she's just against bear hunting in general. Yeah. I found the quote and here, and I'll just say it really quick. Uh, she says spring bear hunting violates hunting ethics. In my opinion, um, underpinning oh, my, in her, so, in her professional opinion, in her professional bear watching or whatever, she's not hunting. So in her bear watching and her, and her scientific professional opinion not even scientific just opinion i was being facetious there yeah (laughs) and 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 that was the that was the foundation that was the underpinning on using her own words that was the foundation of her vote prior to even hearing any of the scientific data so you know what i mean so what what scientific data if you know something is unethical like i said in a previous podcast like spotlighting deer what scientific data is going to be like oh okay now i see that that's fine it, you know it's probably not <laughs> no so she's already against it right yeah so uh, to me she should be taken off the commission that vote should not be counted and spring bear hunting should continue because it's just complete bias it it's unacceptable oh okay what was the direction of what do you got you guys got what like the washington state fish and wildlife department i'm assuming Where, yeah, what was so- their position on this their position and their biologists, which are hired to ensure, you know, the population is doing well, regardless of, of, you know, any sort of hunting pressure on our end, political pressure, all of the biologists and the department were in favor of continuing the hunt as is. All of them. Yeah. And it was it, like, we have a spring bear up here in British Columbia. We're just North of you guys, not that far. Yeah. And I mean, we're allowed two over the count counter tags it's a general open season you can go shoot two spring bear which i think most bear hunters uh you know if they go out they they shoot for two two bears in the spring and i mean you know that's totally sustainable there's absolutely and like washington's not that much different than british columbia no it's not i mean we have a ton of bear we really do and you know they the the biologists brought out numbers of, of the success rates. And so in spring bear hunting, the, it's a special draw. That's what it is. And so they allow 656 tags or something to that, that effect, maybe 665. It's right around the mid 60s. And the success rate the previous year was like 143 bears got taken out. Which, 143 out of, 600, 600, out of 600, 600 and some odd permits that were allowed to hunt and so, so but, and, that's a low percentage 
Right. And our overall population is like a, a, a low conservative estimate is 20,000 bears. There, other estimates are like 28 to 30, maybe even higher. So it's, you know, it's a fraction of a percent of the total population of the of black bear in the state. It's like it's like 0.65 percent or something to that effect. It's a very small amount, which is completely obviously sustainable. Yeah, I would think. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, so now, so now we're left with we have spring bear on pause. Um, they have another meeting December 2nd through the 4th or something to that effect that's going to talk about spring bear, uh, their decision and uh, elk hunting and, and wolves and a few other topics. Um, but we're kind of just left, a lot of the hunters were just left blindsided by, hey, we had no idea that this was even a topic of discussion. And now, you know, now we're left without a spring bear season. And, and, you know, and when you put in for these draws too, you build points. So if you don't get drawn, you get a point for that year, which helps you for the next year by a fraction of a percent to possibly draw again. So some people put in, you know, for five, 10, 15, 20 years, um, and it costs money to do that. And so a lot of people have built up points. I only have like five because I was drawn, you know, five years ago, I got drawn or six years ago. Yeah, I, I remember the last time we, we spoke, you were telling us about uh, your nephew. He got... Uh he got a draw and you didn't. Yeah. Yeah. So he got drawn and, and he wasn't successful, but you know, the, the good thing about that was, is he was able to get out and enjoy the outdoors. And yeah, um, definitely. And we got, you know, within 20 yards of a bear, but it was in the brush and it was peeling trees and there was no shot, but he got to see, you know, the damage the bears do and all this fun stuff. Um, he got a chance just to get out and enjoy it. And now that's, that's gone. And hopefully in 2023 or sooner, we can try to get that back. Yeah. Cause if, the unfortunate thing is it's it's done i mean even if you got it even if you had you know all the hunters um out for that december discussion um you know it's uh yeah it's just one of those things that it's to get a decision overturned it's it's tough we had that issue with our grizzly bear hunt that got uh we went through the same thing um in 2017 2018 yeah, where where it was you know there was always a thing about um when you when you shot a grizzly bear and grizzly bears are leh right you it was a limited entry hunt the same thing you guys have with spring bear um i mean we work on a lottery system here uh we don't get there's no points allocated per draw or anything like that so but anyway um so the understanding was how, well sorry how it said in the regs was you only you didn't have to take out all the meat you could just take out the carcass and and that and that was the rule and so you know you could just go shoot a grizzly bear leave all the meat in the bush yeah. and um just take out you know take the hide out now the understanding was that they knew this was an issue with the newly or the unelected NDP government because one of their one of their campaign promises was to kind of put an end to trophy hunting and from the understanding that the hunting community got was that okay they're just going to change the regulations to where you have to take out all the meat which was fine hindsight's 2020 maybe hunters should have taken that onus upon ourselves and said hey listen we need to change this before somebody else has a, you know yeah inevitably uh they just take it away which which is what happened so but anyway, fast forward to 2017, our unelected government got in and um, they, they, their, our understanding was what was going to happen was they were just going to do that. They were going to write it. So we had to take out all the meat had to be taken out. The grizzly bear hunting was still going to be left in, in the regulations. You're allowed to hunt grizzly bear on LEH location only. And uh, I mean, cause like, again, like same thing, the grizzly bear numbers are sustainable here in British Columbia. There's tons of bears, tons of grizzly bears. So, and then all of a sudden um, it came, it came over where they just did an immediate ban on grizzly bear hunting. And it, it was kind of like a slap in the face. Everybody was, you know, caught with, you know, caught with their pants down. They didn't know what, what to do. Guide outfitters, everybody were just, um, they were just shocked. Now, again, like I said, you know, maybe looking at it, you know, hindsight's 2020, maybe, you know, maybe somewhere along the line, somebody should have said, hey, um, 
we see what else is going on in other states and other places all over the world, maybe we should uh, maybe we should have a serious look at, at what we're doing here and we should make this, you know, so anybody who's opposing it, because I mean, you're looking at like, take it an ante hunter. They're looking at that one specific animal and they're looking at being like, well, look at these guys. They get to go shoot a grizzly bear. They don't even have to take the meat out because I mean, initially like, Already, anti-hunters, for some reason, they feel that we as hunters don't eat bear. I'm talking, you know, like black bear, grizzly bears, whatever. For some reason, they they see bear as just a trophy and that's it for us. No, absolutely. absolutely. I've ran into numerous people that are like, they have no idea. It's a, it's In this state, it's illegal for us to shoot a bear and take the hide and walk off. You cannot yeah. let the meat go to waste. Yeah, well, it's the same. It's the same in British Columbia for the black bear, but for some reason, it was just stated that we didn't have to take. Like, it was just endorsed that we don't have to take out the meat for the grizzly bear, and I think what? that was just a grand. Like, it just, you know what I mean? It just for so long, it was just in there, and nobody questioned it. So it just, it just sat there. I've, I've heard. I've never killed a grizzly. I've never eaten grizzly. I've never even seen a grizzly in the wild. But um, I, I've heard that their meat is just riddled with worms and parasites more so than you know black bear they'll have trichinosis or something to that effect or maybe a worm here or there but i i've heard that grizzlies are just nasty their meat's just bad yeah and see i've heard guys that i know that have ate grizzly bear and they say this it's about the same for the black bear now if you find a black bear who's been on eating rotten salmon you know what i mean it's gonna taste it's not gonna taste as good as like a bear that's been eating nice berries up on the side of a hill yeah so and that's most of the bears over here they're all eating berries yeah you know i I could see if the anti-hunters if they came if if we were shooting black bear and just taking their hides and walking off and we were shooting a bunch of sows and we were orphaning a bunch of cubs and you know just being kind of reckless i could see why they would complain about it but uh, you know, of the 143 bears or whatever that was taken last spring bear, there was only one lactating female that was taken out of that bunch. And it's not illegal to shoot uh, sows with cubs in this state. It's it's frowned upon. Um, any hunter that I know of would not do that on purpose in the first place. But that just goes to show you one out of 143, um, only one was lactating. And so that tells me that that was probably incidental. Like it wasn't something that the person did on purpose, um, you know, and it's, it is what it is, but it, it wasn't like they were being reckless. Um, and it's not like we are just shooting these animals and leaving them to rot. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, definitely. And I yeah. don't understand either. Like, cause I have, I have bear rugs surrounding me as we speak. I'm, I'm we got one on the back of my chair and, you know, full mounts and blah, blah, blah. And I, I don't see why it's bad as a person as a hunter to not only use all the meat and take the skull and and bleach the skull or make your necklace out of it or something to that effect but also take the hide and have it as a place of honor in your house like i don't have these things in my house to bring people in and and brag to them like oh hey you know look what i killed i'm a big tough man Mm -hmm. i have them as a remembrance of the hunt for me personally like i remember you know every story behind every hide that's in this room i'm in yeah, well, and that's just it. I mean, you know, my house is loaded with ant dead things, and it it's they're not there for anybody else. They're just there for myself, and that's it. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, I, we've heard, we've heard that, and I've heard that before, where people talk about, well, if it's not about the trophy, then you should just have to leave the hide and only take the meat. But to me, that's that's just as much of a waste. Like, why would you waste waste that? Yeah. Why would you waste the hide? Why would you not help? your local economy by paying a taxidermist to tan it, you you know, that type of thing. It it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, some of the, the, some of the, the thought process that goes on in, well, I'm, I mean, I shouldn't say that just because I'm a hunter and it's easy for me to say, you know, point fingers at an anti hunter and say, you know, you're out to lunch and everything I do is right. And everything you do is wrong. So, um, yeah, but you can you can sometimes you can look at these people and and say, you know, you have a leather belt and a leather purse. And yeah. Well, and, I, that and that's what irritates me <laughs> exactly. Or you know, in BC, you know, we've got four million people here and three and a half million people live in Vancouver, and um, shutting the grizzly bear hunt down 
in British Columbia means shit to somebody living in Vancouver. And I find it totally hypocritical when these people say that hunting is bad or killing animals is bad as they're going through the drive through with their $300 wallet or their, you know, their $500 shoes driving or their SUV up to Whistler and skiing for the weekend. Like how many animals has that displaced? Do you know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah. like it's, or, or, you know, or, or if a grizzly bear is walking through their campground and they're calling the, you know, fishing game to come scare it off. Yeah. Then, or, or, or kill it now because it's a pro it's, it's an actual problem now because they can see it firsthand. Yeah. Right. It's Even like, it's like the between. coyotes, How you know, the coyote that were down in Stanley park this year. It, I don't know. I don't know if you're familiar with Stanley park, but it's a big park down in in the lower mainland of vancouver and these um you know obviously if you don't if you don't manage these coyotes then obviously there's going to be too many of them it's just like it's it's not rocket science right so um all the people in vancouver they you know before they were talking about oh you shouldn't hunt coyotes you shouldn't kill coyotes you shouldn't hunt wolves you shouldn't kill wolves blah 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 right and now all of a sudden there's people down in van down in stanley park down in vancouver they're getting attacked by coyotes and then they're saying i re- remember reading articles being like well where did all the freaking coyotes come from like well <laughs> seriously yeah and, you know, you know, and, unless it's very... right in front of them unless an issue unless a problem is, or an issue is right directly in front of them they just don't see the correlation between like they just they can't they can't put the puzzle pieces together for themselves they should That's let fun. they should let their wiener dog go run loose on that park uh, right at dusk and see how see yes. how fast that thing disappears see how well it does yeah. Yeah. Or you know what they should <laughs> yeah. do? Just let the scientists manage our wildlife and leave politics out of it. Yeah, there you go. That that's the bottom line. And that that's really what we're fighting with over here in Washington is just like, you know, it, it's beyond frustrating to hear a commissioner say, "Well, I don't believe in I think spring bear hunting is unethical in the first place, but here's also why, you know, I here's the here's the, the science that they gave me wasn't good enough. It, you know, it probably didn't come from the Humane Society. None of their biologists were on top of it. So, you know, the, the, the science can't be valid type of thing. It's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. And, you know, on, on these podcasts, we're kind of preaching to the choir because I'm sure everyone who's listening to this is probably pro hunting, at least most of them. Um, yeah, I would but, think uh, 100% would be but you know talk to, your, yeah. talk to your non-hunting friends and, and relatives and stuff like that and just try to convey you know, your lifestyle. And, and, you know, I remember when the grizzly thing was happening in, in Canada and I was upset about it and I uh, felt bad for you guys. And there's not a whole lot you guys can do on our end, but we need to look out for each other, regardless of borders, you know, the, the hunts in Africa, they need our support. Canadians need our support. Uh, you, the U S needs Canadian hunter support. We all just, as a community, as a hunting and fishing community, we got to back each other up and and be vocal and strong for every single season and animal that we hunt because they are just trying to chip away as best they can at the rock of north american hunting conservation yeah and i think you and i have we we've had this conversation before when we talked about the low-lying fruit now um you take away the spring bear okay that was the low-lying fruit now what's the next lowest lying fruit the fall bear you take that away Right. What's after that? Right. And it just, it's not going to stop. Yeah. No, it's not going to stop. I mean, I, I, there's, there's other things I can't, I can't talk about yet, but I know about, and I know that they're up to no good for a bunch of things uh, that are common hunting. And man, I tell you, we have got to be very watchful of these commissions and yeah. politicians who want to get rid of our hunting. Well, well, right up right now up in British Columbia, what they're, well, I mean, it's an ongoing issue, and it, the question about is, um, you know, is elk hunting sustainable? Is sheep hunting sustainable? Wolf, cougar, bear, these are all recently brought up in, in our province in British Columbia. You know what I mean? And, and that, like you said, if you're not, you know, <laughs> you, your guard has to be up all the time almost. Do you know what I mean? You always have to be, you can't let your guard down ever as a hunter or else it just seems like soon as you turn your back, um, you know, these anti-hunting group, and it's like you said, you know, they waited strategically. Now this, maybe it just so accidentally or fortuitously happened where they picked the one Saturday or the 
one of two Saturdays that or Fridays that fall on deer hunting. But I mean, come on. Yeah, I mean that's that's like, awfully come on. Different. Yeah, they know like, what's going on. Like, <laughs> like I, I said in an art in a blog recently for the I think for the Western Bear Foundation, I says, look, would you ask your husband to have a meeting with you on Super Bowl Sunday or your wife to have a meeting with you on Black Friday, like the busiest shopping day of the year? you probably would ask them if you wanted to get away with whatever you were trying to get away with because they wouldn't show up. Yeah. So that's very, I mean, to me, that's very similar. Oh, um, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Highly yeah. suspect. Totally. Well, so what's the next, what's the next move? What's the next play? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure that out. There's a lot of people who are upset about it and trying to figure it out too. Um, I'll be speaking at the commission thing on uh, December 2nd through the 4th. Uh, yeah, you know, if I get called on, I get to talk for three minutes, so I will put my voice in there. But um, really, I, I I really need to try to get Lorna Smith not uh, uh, confirmed by the legislature as due to her bias. So my my goal is to get rid of her off of that commission and um, do what I can to get Spring Bear reinstated. Um, as quickly as possible uh you know if it if i have to wait until 2023 when they start uh revisiting or late 2022 when they start revisiting this idea that's fine but i'm sure they're going to hear from a lot of hunters this next time around yeah they're going to get flooded so. so so that's just it completely this completely blows my mind that if it's a tie a draw they just why don't they just leave it as was like why shut it down why change something that drastically do you know what I mean? Like, I have, no, like, I, I why, completely agree. Why wouldn't you just leave it as it is? Say, okay, you know what? It's a draw. And it, and it's not like this hunt is brand new. This hunt's been going on for years and years and years and years and years. So if it has one more season due to this draw, you know, what's it going to hurt? It's not going to hurt a thing. The state would get more money. Um, you know, maybe the Department of Fish and Wildlife could study the spring bear harvest, uh, you know, the harvest numbers more thoroughly to maybe satisfy these commissioners instead of just canceling it. So do they know how many bears are taken each year in Washington total? Do uh, they have they that do. data? Yeah, they do. I, I, I don't have it on me right but, quick. But no, but they know. Is it, it do, like, do you know it's if it's, like, it's, it's you, like 6% maybe, I, I want to say 6% of the overall population. Right. Which tolerable levels, to my knowledge, are something like fifteen to twenty or some of that effect. Yeah. So, uh, do they? So do you guys well take more? Below. Do you guys take more bears in the fall or in the spring? Do you think? Um, we take more in the fall because the fall is over over the counter. Yeah. But gotcha. More tags. Rate, but the success rate is higher in the spring, um, just due to you know there's there's less hunters around and there's more bear that are undisturbed. Basically, yeah. what it comes down to. So it's that success rate is better in the spring, depending on the unit, like overall through all the units that you can hunt in the spring, that's the success rate is higher. And then, but we take more in the, in the fall. Yeah. Man, this, yeah, yeah I don't know. I got to, uh, I got to crack another beer here because this is blown my oh. mind. I, I'm drinking a rum and Coke as we speak. I, oh, I don't nice. smoke weed, but I, I almost started this week. My blood <laughs> pressure was like through the roof. I was just like, oh my gosh, I cannot. I'm glad I had to wait a couple of days to get on a podcast because it was going to be, it was going to be colorful <laughs> language. I think the whole time. <laughs> so what's that saying? Um, oh, I, I, I read it in your article you wrote there. Uh, Guard the gate with the guy. Oh, from yes. the Eater. He talks about this. And I think, man, I remember hearing uh, him talk about this, like, you know, cause there was another state where they were facing um, a, a bear hunting ban. Wasn't there, was it California? Well, California has had some, well, California has got much like Washington. They have scads of anti hunters who would like to just abolish everything when it comes to hunting, but like uh, New Jersey lost their bear hunting season last year, year before or something to that effect. And they got a, they got a ton of black bear down there in New Jersey. Um, really? guard, yeah. Uh, guard the gate is like uh, a saying that clean Newcom from bear hunting magazine. And now they belong to meat eater. Um, the, the bear render podcast he uses that term a lot he's kind of coined that phrase and that just talks about you know being vigilant guarding the gate of of hunting he he uses 
uh, the idea that anti-hunters use predators to get their foot in the door, to get their foot through the gate, to attack other hunting avenues. So, you know, they, they try to get rid of hunting with grizzly bears or black bears um, because that lets the low hanging fruit, you know, it's an easy pick. Um, and then they can pick away at, you know, hunting deer during the rut, hunting whitetails, um, over bait, yep. uh, you know, any, uh, I, any, any of they pick apart. Yeah. And they do it. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's strategic and, you know, it, it's so sad. It, it's, it's just, I, it's just unfortunate how well organized these Annie hunting groups are and how unorganized us hunters are. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And they have a ton of money too, you know? Yeah. It just, it, we, yeah, it, it's, it's like David and Goliath. I feel, I mean, I feel kind of helpless, but then again, I'm not going to take it lying down and I'm going to, I'm going to be a, a pebble in someone's shoe. I can tell you that as, an, as best as I can. So, you know, I, I think it would help if people joined uh, certain hunting groups, you know, like blood origins or sporting Alliance or, or any, you know, Rocky mountain elk foundation, Western bear foundation, any sort of group conservation group, mule deer foundation that can, help fight this off politically that has some sort of money, some sort of backing and just, you know, donate toward them and do what you can monetarily and, and be active and, and vocal. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, well, yeah, and, yeah. Well, you know, and that's the thing is the, uh, the squeaky wheel, it always gets heard. Right. So, and I, uh, I tell people too, like, this is, this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Yeah, because I mean, exactly. just this last week, I was getting kind of exhausted from it, um, yeah. just because I was so focused on it. But I was like, I had to remind myself, hey, this isn't. I'm not going to solve this this week, so you know, it's just it's going to take months. Who knows no. how long? I'm gonna plug and and, a, and a fortune and unfortunately, it's uh, you know, it's going to be a lot longer battle than that. It's uh, it, it's you know the oh, lifestyle yeah. yeah, yeah. the lifestyle that we love to live. We're going to have to fight for it to our last breath or the last day we do it you know what i mean yeah. it's yeah, uh it's like tooth and nail probably till the day i croak yeah exactly yeah and if you're gonna be in the outdoors and hunt fish then uh till the day you die then unfortunately um you're gonna have to fight and you're gonna have to uh you're gonna have to earn it that's for sure yeah. hmm. so now you only got uh fall bear to hunt well you know and that that's still not a bad thing like it's it's august 1st through november 15th Oh, wow. Um, we, yeah. can, we can get two bear a year. Um, so, you know, that's, that's nice. And it's over the counter. Yeah. It's just um, so much harder. I would be, dude, if they, if we didn't have the spring bear hunt up here, I'd be fucked. Cause I realized this fall, I had one bear tag left. I suck. I, I, I suck at hunting bears in the fall. I don't, I don't know why. Oh, I remember that text message you sent me. You're like, "Oh man, I need help spring bear or fall bear hunting." I'm like, yeah. oh, "I'm hunting." But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I suck. I don't, man. Uh, there's a so. Have, there's... have you read? Have you read my book? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. Oh, okay. Oh, well, yeah. then. Yeah, I'm just hopeless. Yeah. Don't I'm pay attention hopeless. to that, listeners. <laughs> I, I, I can't help you. He's just an app. Yeah, exactly. He's just kidding. no, man. I just I don't know. They just it just seems like in the spring. I don't know, man. You know, you just, you have to, I think I'm just hunting them in the fall. Like I'm hunting them in the spring. You know what I mean? Like, I think yeah. I'm how you the same. The, how you hunt them in the spring? Well, the spring, you know, I, I wait before, well, you know, typically how I did it was I would wait, you know, if I found in the mornings or the evenings, you'd get tons of action. So those would be like the two main times I'd focus on. Yeah. And then actually this year, on the real hot days, I found down in like the low gullies where you can find a little bit of water and where it's really cool down there. Cause, um, I went down in these, these gullies and there are a few hundred feet, you know, down in these, you know, these crevices and stuff. I went down in there, man. And it's gotta be 10 degrees cooler down there. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I found on the really, on the, when it's really, really hot. I was going down on these and I was bumping bears like you wouldn't believe. So that's what I did. Uh, I had success with that in the spring. Uh, I got one bear and then I, man, I, I set my, I, I came across this bear. He was a tank, really chocolate brown color, like big, big bruiser, beautiful bear came across him once. And so for all of 
June, I I was after this guy. I passed up on other bears. I, I was after this guy, and I just ran out of time, unfortunately. Um, mm. So I still had I still had a bear tag, and then I was like, well, you know what? I'm going to go after bear this fall. And I, then it, you know, it's November 27th. Well, when I texted you, I came to the the conclusion that I just suck hunting bears in the fall. <laughs> Maybe so I just you, maybe I just suck in the spring too. They're just they're so they're they're just around so much that I just get lucky. I don't know. <laughs> what when does your fall season start? Well, you see, it's kind of funny here in region eight where I am in the south part of British Columbia. You're allowed actually allowed to hunt bear August first, but for all of August, it has to be on private land. So September first mm-hmm. is the general, or I mean, you can hunt, you can go hunt them on wherever you want and it's open it's still open it's open till november 30th so okay I, hey man it's not over yet i got a couple more days no man get out there and predator call <laughs> yeah no seriously yeah. Like, i know i like, i was that, try, I, I tried that and like i just I don't, like i i just don't know what i'm looking for like i don't know like right now where where would be the best place to look for a bear like just going in blind uh they're gonna like be an area uh, yeah like an area i know like i hunt in specific areas where i know there's bears like i know there's bears in there because i've seen them on my trail cameras you know when i'm elk hunting or deer hunt i've seen them on my trail cameras so i know there's bear in these areas and i mean like they're there in the spring and they're there in, in october so obviously i can't see them you know taking taking off too far to go hibernate so they got to be close to that area i no? would say they're around there somewhere yeah um, I, I would grab my predator call and get up there and you know, so you you want to you want to kind of find higher up little for me I like to find like maybe a log pile you know from a from a cut or a rocky outcrop something I can kind of look above the brush and then call down into and if I can't find that um, I'll just call down into a canyon or I'll call along um, anywhere I kind of have a shooting lane but I usually like to to call from an elevated position right yeah um, or where i'm looking across the canyon something to that effect somewhere where that sound is going to carry for a while too so you know not not everywhere i call that will happen um some places are super brushy like i'm calling in trees and stuff like that but i i, I like to be up where that sound will carry and so you are affecting the largest area possible with that sound and you have to give them time to come in. So hang out for like an hour, predator calling, and then wait for another 15 minutes after you're done calling to see if anything else comes in. Um, that's what I would do. And I would be looking for like, you know, avalanche shoots or, you know, any sort of denning area that you know of in that area that you're hunting bear, rocky outcrops, you know, um, blowdowns, that type of stuff. Um, call into that stuff and, and see if you can knock something loose. Does it matter what time of the day you go hit this up? Um, I would hit it up any time of day this, or this time of year uh, for yeah. sure, because, you know, if they're going to come, I would say, and we don't have a lot of light anyway, but uh, n- normally I tell people, hey, early mornings or I like to hunt yeah. in the afternoon. Evening. Yeah. Yeah. In but the spring, like that's there. where I, I normally focus is then. But um, like if you, if, if you get a clear day, like a day where it's not downpouring or, something like that in the next couple of days, I would definitely head up and try to do that while it's, while it's calm and clear. Let's not, a, you know, a super wet monsoon outside. Um, that way your sound will travel and they can hear it. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Well, I'll have to give it a whirl, man. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm not having any luck hunting whitetails right now. So like, yeah, I mean, it just can't get any worse. So. Might as well go for that. <laughs> I've called in deer too. Predator calling, man. I've called in. I've called in bucks and does. They'll some will come to check it out, or some will stand up and start walking away because they, you know, don't want to be involved in whatever's going on over there. So it, that knocks them loose lots of times. Wow. So that, that could pan out for two situations. Well, I'll give it a whirl. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe I'll get a double. You never know. I mean, stranger things have happened. <laughs> yeah. Then I'd have nothing to hunt though, and then. Then what? Then I'd be, you have to work on my house or finish the bathroom or. No, you can't have that. Shit, man. No, we don't want that. Not when there's hunter hunting opportunities. That's for um, July. There's nothing to hunt. Right on, man. All right. Well, yeah. uh, it was good catching up again, buddy. Yeah, of course. Anytime. 
my uh, my wife just the, the fun police just walked in. I'm getting a look. So, oh man, party's over. Well, you better get back with the uh, your parents think, and yeah, I think it's got to go to bed. So, but uh, okay, bud. Uh, thanks for uh, catching up and uh, bringing us up to speed on, on what's going on down there and, and what we need to do. Like, I think you're you know you hit the nail on the head there. We all just need to uh, need to come together and uh, and and you know just because you guys are down there doesn't mean we can't. Support support you and vice versa because like you said it's just it's going to be one thing after another oh yeah absolutely That's okay man i'm gonna let you get back to your rum i'm gonna finish my beer all right kevin we'll talk soon yes sir have a good day oh actually hey hey you know what Yo. we got to uh, give that book away oh yeah it's right at my feet it's in a box under my desk at my feet right now yeah we got a book i, I sent one to you to, to get autographs so maybe what we'll do is uh i'll think of something and we'll uh we'll put i'll post it through uh through instagram and we'll come up with something and then maybe uh you could you could send it to me and and uh, i could shoot it off or, or you could send it off directly i guess depending on where they're from and uh i'll throw a couple uh a couple hats and some tees or a hoodie in there too we'll get it out for christmas yeah just um you know let me know who wins and i'll i'll just cover the cost it's not a big deal I'll okay brother sounds good out.